This is Robert Galarowitz, naturopath, nutritionist, 19 years with a kidney transplant. We've got a special guest today is Stephen McConnell, a lipidemiologist. We're talking about niacin today. Now, just in my experience, niacin is a tremendous, tremendous nutrient, which has so many benefits. Oh, yeah. needs. And it doesn't matter what study I looked up, it always shown benefit. And it has a tremendous amount of benefit in cardiovascular health. It was the first drug all by itself, not in combination, to lower heart attack 27%, ischemic stroke 24%. And in diabetics, the combined cardiovascular outcomes, including mortality, was 54% lower in diabetics. That's in conflict with what many people believe and don't not, know much about niacin. We're not talking and, one study. You know, we're, we're not we're not talking like just one. Oh, no, that's the first study. And that was the first yeah. ever study to reduce heart attack. It was niacin. You know, so so, you know, we, we know that it's excellent. It's great for the heart. What does it do for the kidney? Well, we probably will never know the complete list. And that's the interesting thing with niacin. When you research it, I saw a study, I think it was 1991, Omada, a Japanese researcher. He found out that not only did niacin lower phosphorus, but it was antiproteinuric. In as little as a tenth, a tenth, one tenth of a gram, 100 milligrams. And they've used it up to... Many studies are doing 1,500 milligrams, 2,000 milligrams. But in those low doses, it wouldn't affect a lot of cardiovascular parameters. But it'll lower the phosphorus almost as good as most of these chelators, which are prescription. And they cost anywhere from $100 to $1,000 a month, which is insane. Now, you know, it, it lowers phosphorus. It, it also protein area. Several right? Protein it, area. It's it improves the GFR. Very cost effective. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yes, it's five cents a gram. Now they know it also affects PTH. So you really, really, you want to use niacin. You don't want to use niacinamide, no flush niacin, any of these other forms, because they're not going to give you 100% of the benefits that you should do. Right. Now, curiously, once the niacin hits the liver, and imagine the liver is an imaginary object here in front of me. Niacin hits the liver. It comes out the other end. It's been amidated. Niacinamide, amide, nicotine amide, that's amidation. Now they're no flush niacin. You can get that over the counter. Well, it's not void or lacking benefit entirely, but it won't move the lipoproteins whatsoever. It you has less of cardiovascular benefits that you that get some, but but not largest nearly. complication of kidney. Yeah. So. And besides, no flush niacin costs more. It's twenty, thirty dollars a month. Now you got all these guys brokering these boutique. NADs, right? Niacinamide, nicotinamide, NAD plus. There's a million. And they charge anywhere from thirty to a hundred dollars a month like it's some brand new drug. No, it's not. Uh, when you take plain niacin, which is five cents a gram, it goes to the liver liver. And every time you take niacin, NAD comes out the other. And that's highly beneficial. NAD is absolutely necessary for normal mitochondrial function. And it does a plethora of things. And in disease states, it's usually depleted. It's low, especially kidney disease. And there's a lot of literature, probably 100 or more papers on that. It's conclusive. But the quickest way to get there is take plain niacin. So you want to get niacin. And now how would you start someone with um, like the starting dose, increasing it? Pretty straightforward. And again, Castelli knew how to do it. He would start them at 50 milligrams and only with food. Don't take it without food. Even if it's a protein bar, that's good. But don't take it on an empty stomach. And I'll clock. explain later. I know that. <laughs> that's my yeah, fear. Yeah. If, if, 50 milligrams will still make some people flush, but my wife was the most challenging niacin patient. She couldn't tolerate niacin, and they only had a 500 milligram. They originally had a 375, and they discontinued it. Big mistake. And I gave it to her fasting at bedtime like an idiot. And uh, she's Sicilian, so I had a rather un unpleasant encounter with my wife. Anyway, I didn't want to be a young widower, so I said, I got to do something about this. LP Lily is nothing to mess with. So I was in a local supplement shop. This is way before Amazon. And I see this little Carlson lab bottle. This is 50 milligrams. I went, holy crap, that's it. I said, there's no way she'd have a hard time with 50 milligrams. I gave her 500. I bought three bottles. I think it was $9 plus tax. Brought it home and we're watching TV and I gingerly gave her the bottle and she took one and she has very low blood pressure. So her hands are cold and her feet. And a couple minutes later, she turns to me and goes, boom, my hands are warm. And, and it kind of swept over me like, 
oh, thank, thank you, God, because she liked it, which yeah, it wasn't, I couldn't it wasn't have over, predicted. It wasn't that overpowering, flushing feeling. That's, right. Yeah. And that's a hypersensitive individual. Most people don't feel anything with 50. That's what I was well, going to say. I was mm -hmm. like, most people aren't, yeah, could pretty much start at, what, what would you say, 100 milligrams? Would nah, I mean, higher? they make a they make a hundred milligram you can get at Walmart, and uh, it's it's rugby and it's scored. The tablet has a a line through it, and it makes it easy to split it. But KAL on Amazon makes a fifty and a twenty five. I've got five people. It may be four, but it's no more than five who I had to start on the twenty five because they're complaining on the fifty. But guess what? If you start them as low as possible. They almost always do good. I've had almost no treatment failures. I can't say I got everybody up to three grams or more a day, but most of them are doing a gram, 1,500. Uh, probably 50% of them are well past 1,500, and a good quarter of them are doing three grams. I do four and a half. My wife does four and a half. Well, it's all about the, the dosing, not the amount, because once you start with that little bit, it's a very brief, mild hot flash. And within three to four days, it goes away. Now, the yeah. caveat there is don't screw it up. <laughs> don't Take miss it a every day. day. It, yeah, if you miss a day, you'll, you'll flush. And that's why Castelli had such good luck with it. He actually gave him an Alka-Seltzer in the first week or two. And I don't think he gave it to everybody. But he's retired, so I can't talk to him anymore. But um, the, the premise is that it's the time between the doses. Was it four hours? Was it 12 hours? Was it 24 hours? If you take three doses a day, the breakfast dose is barely 12 hours after the dinner dose. And you might get warm or get a mild flush at breakfast, but you won't at lunch because that was maybe four hours later and you won't at dinner because that was four hours later. It's the frequency of the dosing, the time period between the doses that uh, influences the re-emergent, the repeat hot flash. And boy, once they're on board for a week or two, it's pretty easy. I get a lot you of questions. And it, it just goes away. And that's only for the people who yeah. get it. Yeah, and, and I am a redhead, clearly. <laughs> and I have a light complexion, so they tend to flush more. Scotch-Irish people you know, like me. Well, I still rarely have a flush. And it's usually I had one extra glass of wine because I had a tough day or whatever. But it goes away quickly. And almost everybody I know that has a hot flash, it's infrequent. And they say, I don't care anymore. And I understood there's a psychological component. So I don't push the dose up all the way. I just try to get them on what they'll tolerate, but they will not quit. And then level it off, prematurely leveled off. I'm looking for a higher dose, but I wait 90 days. So you, things like, you level uh, them off at like 90 days, and then you look to start increasing? I have to sell it now. I have to sell it up front, and then I have to sell it at least one more time. And that's a moment when you see it, what the lab work looks like. And I go, geez. And I act like I can't remember. You know, I, I'm not ga gaming. I'm just setting it up. I say, how much are you taking? Because it's, it's difficult. Um, you really want people to get the higher doses because they get the max back. Right. And as a you know so practitioner that, myself, it's not. It's not easy to get people or you know get them to do something. I know beneficial. you'll appreciate this. Everything is uh, worth having is worth waiting for, and the benefit from niacin takes some work. But after three months, not really. But at three months, I've got the new lab work, and I walk the patient through it and make sure they got a copy. I'm reading a copy, and I make a big fuss. I go into a cheerleader mode, almost like I have pom-poms. I, I walk them through everything. Look, your inflammation's down. Your oxidation's down. Your kidneys improved. Your liver function tests were elevated. Now they're normal or below normal. And, and then the patient's like, oh. And then, I, then I'd pretend I don't remember. You know, I have notes, but I'll say, how much are you taking? They go, I'm taking two, two 500s. Oh, that's all? I, I say that on purpose. And they go, well, wow, I can't believe how good my lab work. Should I take more, Steve? Is it okay to? And I go, well, I think you know the answer is yes already. I said, but I don't know. You know, that's another five cents a day. Can you swing it? And, and they realize I'm, I'm poking fun. Oh, you know, off they go. They titrate themselves. I'm hardly involved at all at that point. And next thing I know, 
I get these texts. I'm doing two grams. I'm doing three grams. My new blood work's coming in because, you know, they had 10 reds. Now they got one red and two yellows. That works. And then later on, they're like, I got to get rid of that yellow. I'm like, wait a minute. Appreciate the moment. The reds are gone. Yeah. You got one yellow now and you're titrating the niacin, which isn't a bad idea, but, you know, appreciate every step yeah. in the story. And you're talking on the you color, the, the graph color of the blood test, where it's got the red and yellow is like, uh, yeah. red is worse, yellow is, is still like yeah, it, problems, but not as bad. Most labs don't colorize. Yeah, that's why. Or I like Quest, which is bass backwards. They put the best colorized Cleveland stuff at the back. And they got the routine black and white report, the first eight pages. They waste a huge amount of paper. And it's difficult to interpret that, and it doesn't provoke the patient to change behavior. So I prefer colorized. Sometimes I'll colorize it, scan it, send it back to the patient, and then they see red, yellow, green, makes it way easier to get the job done. And they appreciate the shift from red to yellow or yellow to green, because now they don't have to understand what the numbers mean. That's my job. But they get it. When they see their LP, the light comes down 40, 50, 60%. There's a paper where it went down 88%, but what the authors, that. yeah, what the authors didn't catch was they had to reduce the statin to get there. And that's another story. Statins raise LP little a, absolutely, and it increases risk. And I know Dr. Nissen and a lot of people don't want to believe that, but Dr. Zemeckis is truly the expert in LP little a, and he avoids a statin if he sees it increase the LP little a. He's Two, two things, either one or both niacin and a PCSK9 inhibitor. And you can see that on Twitter. So I use something lower LP little a, and I avoid the statin. If I have to make a compromise with the provider, I say, just put it to lower, lowest dose. If you're really worried about the LDL going up, don't. I'll get the LDL lower even with I, one yeah. eighth, one eighth. Of the starting of the dose you had that patient on, I'll take it from 80 down to 10 or from 40 across or down to five. Now it allows the niacin to work and the statin has less impact on increasing the LP little a. And now we found out the first statin, which Merck uh, attempted to ban in the United States, is a couple thousand years old, red yeast rice, Zinchikang in Chinese or, or Monascus papyrus in Latin. But red yeast rice is a statin, but it has about 12 other components. But there's about 1% lovastatin in there. And that's equal to about the lowest dose of Mevacor, the first statin. It's, of course, you all the drug companies copy nature. I know before. Yeah, and it lowers LP LA, at least in, in the, wow. the studies, 23%. So I thought it, at least it's not increasing it. And you're getting the benefit of a statin, plus there's a lot of other natural compounds in there that are anti-inflammatory, flavonoids, and so forth. And, and that little bit of lovastatin is just enough to help the niacin. And because it's such a small amount, the, the LP little a goes down. I tried to find a few other papers. I found two others, but the one paper actually put a number on it, 23%. So I thought quite often two plus two equals three, not four, because it's not additive. It's uh it's a companion. They help each other, but it's not necessarily additive. But I have some patients on red yeast rice now, and it took a lot of discussion to get the doctor to agree to do that. The and the they're tolerating it better. And when I get their next set of labs, I'm going to see if the LP little a came down more because they're already on niacin. That's sort of a mandate in my world. And a lot of people think that's nuts, but uh, no. be like Jesus. Forgive them. They don't know what they do. So, so you got kidney issues, your kidney disease, you're looking to take niacin. You want to start with niacin, you know, that's what's preferred. That's what you want to use. 25, 50 milligrams to start. Helps right. phosphorus, protein, the, all the cardiovascular complications, right, that, that are often kind of come along with kidney disease. Right. 